So we've talked about contagious fear. We've talked about contagious fear because that's what happened. The 10 came back, they spread a bad report, and the whole assembly, they were afraid, they saw themselves as small and inferior and not strong or weak, and then they made the rest of the people feel that way. So they spread fear. It was contagious fear. But here's what we have to remember. If fear is contagious, then faith is also contagious. And that's an important, important piece. So I'm going to end by, by sharing with you, um, I'm going to end by sharing with you just a little bit. And I'm not going to tell his whole story because, oh my God, James has his own story to tell. But for those of you who don't know, James and I have been on one heck of a faith journey over the last two weeks. We have been on one heck of a faith journey. Um, and again, I'll give you the, the high level. He went to the hospital on October the 15th, the emergency room on October the 15th, uh, with a swollen and infected foot. And what we soon discovered uh, just a few days later was that he, uh, his foot was extremely infected with three different types of bac bacteria, one of which was unfortunately a, a, the flesh-eating bacteria. And this bacteria, um, again, fortunately, was isolated into his foot. But if you're familiar with the flesh-eating bacteria, the key is you've got you to gotta stop it. And so, um, unfortunately, he had to have his lower right leg amputated. So call it just below the calf. He had to have his, his right, right foot amputated. Not what we were expecting, right? Not at all what we were expecting. And as we were leading up to it, I had all my, my prayer partners, and thanks to all of you who I reached out to um, directly and said, hey, I need you praying. And you all were praying for exactly what I told you to pray for. And what James and I were talking about is, you know, sometimes we pray for things, and we don't know, we don't know the, all the, re, we don't know what's behind the scenes, right? So while I was praying and I had you all praying that he would walk out of that hospital with two feet because I knew the risk, what we didn't know was that he had a flesh-eating bacteria. So had we known that, the prayer might have been a little bit different. So what we were praying for was still healing, healing. And, you know, it's, it's been a journey because... I've been, when I, we, we've all been on a, a roller coaster of emotions. But when I think about my own emotions, and I got to capture it all, you know, unfortunately, you guys will be forced to watch 82 videos of the story and the journey. But when I think about just my emotions that I've gone through in the last two weeks, and he's home now, by the way, just so I can tell you that he's home now, um, and doing very, very well. But as I can tell you, my my emotions along the way, you know, I, I cried a lot. I have cried a lot. I say I cry, I have cried a river of tears. I have cried a true river of tears <laughs> over the last two weeks. But I was telling our Sunday school group on Sunday, I wasn't crying from a place of a lack of faith. I wasn't crying from a place of no hope. I was crying because I was disappointed. I was crying because, yes, I was legitimately sad. Nobody wants to see their husband go through what he was about to go through and what he had to go through. But my faith was still strong. My faith was and is still strong, despite God not answering the prayer the way I was praying for it. When I tell you I was praying for him to walk out on two feet seconds before the doctor called at 6 a.m. in the morning to say, we have to amputate. And I held the phone out and I looked at it and I said, really, God? Really? I, I had literally just been praying. it. So, yeah, I was disappointed. But here's what we have to understand is just because we cry, just because we show emotion and we're upset does not mean we have lost faith. Now, for some people it does, but it doesn't mean we have lost faith. And in our case, that is absolutely not the case. We are in a, this is a tough, this is a tough place. But I will tell you, my husband, I'm so proud of that man. I'm so proud of that man. His faith from the time we, he got to the hospital, he said, Christy, whatever happens, I'm good. Whatever happens, I'm good. And I was like, well, can we be good specifically? You know, because I'm all about the specific, specificity. I'm like, can we be good specifically? Like, let's say exactly what we want. Let's just not say either way I'm good. Let's define good. But he was like, Christy. I trust God. Whatever happens, 
I trust God. And his faith has been so strong, unwavering. My man is on fire, y'all. I'm going to tell you, he's on fire. But his, it has been so strong. And that helped to make me stronger. And everybody who has had the opportunity to talk to my husband in the last two weeks has left more encouraged. They called to encourage him. And I'm only hearing one side of the conversation, but he's encouraging them. So when I talk about contagious fear and contagious faith, this is your example of contagious faith. Because my husband and I, we are good. When I tell you, we are good. Is it tough? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be tough? Mm, yeah, it's new. It's different. But we're strong. We're together. We've got 26 years. We'll be celebrating 26 years of marriage next Friday. And I know God's got this. And we're taking it one day at a time. So that's my story. That's as much of the story. And I'm sticking to it.